This is Sarah. This is Jenna. We're from Name Through Songs, and today we're getting candid with Jonah Murray. Hi, we're back, and you're listening to Getting Candid with Name Three Songs. But before we get into our artist interview today, we do have some fangirl nonsense to go over because Addison Ray has changed our whole entire life trajectory. No one is doing it like her. (laughs) No one is doing it like her. Nobody is doing it like her. And I'm so here for the fact that she is Brittany and Christina put into one person. Like, but also Lana. Like, it's so wild. It's it's just like so wild. It's so 90s, but it's also so Tumblr. And I'm just like eating it up so much. I've been so obsessed with her as a pop star for however long this has been like i don't even know like it was at least two years ago maybe three like 2021 i think it was 2021 because there was like the leak of her doing like the quote like it was like a lady gaga demo that then she did and there was a leak of it and i was like i need this i need this as soon as humanly possible this is so good and then she eventually put out an ep and i was like this is just so camp and it is so fantastic and so amazing and now since she's been working with charlie everybody now else is like right like paying attention yeah like thank god so she put so she put out the single obsessed in 2021 and she did the music video for it and her EP so didn't good. come out until 2023, so like only a yeah. year ago. But I think we, on the podcast we were like talking about this, and at the time I was like, "This is a TikToker. Like, why should I care?" And I was like, and "Because this it's is perfect. like, <laughs> no, this is like, like this is exactly what I mean when I say that like artists need to spend time thinking about their craft and figuring out who they yeah. are and what they want to present, and then giving it to us because it's like." going from TikToker to making music is such a jarring jump when it's like, we get so much content that is just bad because they haven't figured out who they are. And this is like, she's put in the time. She clearly has the right team members with her. She has a vision and the execution is incredible. Like I am so excited to see what she continues to do. Well, I mean like the video for like, she's always like had the vision, but I think it was like having to take that step away and then like actually have like a, an action plan to like launch herself properly yeah, as a yeah. pop star. The, the execution of it, the yeah. execution of it is a lot better now. Yeah. Cause like this music video for Aquamarine is so good. And it's just like, so Britney, so Lana. So like, uh, just the like dance uh, number at the end when she gets to the dance, the dance number is beautiful. It was like, I was like, it, the dance number itself, like surprised me so much, like in the choreography. And I, I think it's just incredible. It, like dance is so back music videos are so back <laughs> she yeah she just really has a vision and i'm so excited to see where she continues to take it you know i just said music videos are so back and i would like to continue to restate that because we have damiano from mana skin coming out with his solo project he just gave us a music video for born with a broken heart sarah thoughts and feelings please I mean, he's in his Harry Styles era, and like I'm gonna be front row screaming, crying about this anyway. But I think it's so interesting because it very much is giving Harry Styles like the outfit, yeah. the vibe, the music video, like everything about a it little is bit. like a little bit very, very <laughs> inspired by Harry Styles. And I mean, I'm a big fan of Monaskin. Like I, I've watched Eurovision like for so many years because I lived in England for such a long time, and so like having a rock band win Eurovision was like so cool. And I really, really love their music in Italian. And then like Monaskin put out a record last year that was primarily in English. And it kind of felt like at the time that Damiano's like understanding of English as a songwriter was mainly in regards to like hookup culture. And it was very like primal in that regard. Whereas, like, I don't even speak Italian and listening to their Italian music, I, like, felt like the songs had, were deeper and had more meaning and all this stuff. So it is really cool to see, like, his vision for his solo artistry and that it has more meaning and that it feels like it actually is coming from, like, the same space that, like, his Italian songwriting has come sure. from yeah, yeah, yeah. in regards to the sound yeah. and the feelings that I personally I'm experiencing while listening to it. So I'm good. I'm really curious to see like where he continues to take this. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I'm really excited for the rest of the album to see what we get there. But I yeah. also just think like the trajectory of Monoskin has been so wild because after yeah. your vision, like they, they rose into the spotlight so quickly. Like they were at fashion shows, they were getting brands yeah. like luxury brand deals. Um, and so it's like, it's kind of like Damiano doing this solo project is he, he has so many resources like at his disposal. Yeah. So I'm just like very curious to see like what direction he takes this. 
Yeah, I completely agree. I think it's going to be very interesting. And I think it's always really cool to see like where people take their artistry vision when they go from being part of a group or like and also like being like known for being like a rock band specifically yeah Yeah. to like have like this being very different yeah and i mean i think similarly like in today's conversation with jonah murray like he was in a boy band why don't we for like what like six Six years years from 20 yeah from 2016 to 2022 and so he's 26 years old now like he was in that band from when he was like 18 to 24 and those are such like formative formative years years. yeah experiencing something and to be like experiencing a boy band because that is so different from being in a rock band like we talked with him today about like that experience of being like equally as important and him playing such an equal role in the group as like the other four members of why don't we and then like moving into a solo career but also the fact that like it is like widely known that their time and why don't we was like riddled with abuse from their manager and this is something that they've talked about on multiple interviews and other podcasts and just how like comfortable he is about sharing like his journey and his growth and like healing is like so beautiful and impressive honestly and i also think like coupled with that and especially like baked into the boy band model a little bit is the relationship with the fans yeah of like i mean music being the connector like the reason why we're all here we're all doing this thing you guys included listening but like the message that he wants to share with fans and it being so important to him of like leaving people in a better place like leaving a positive impact on like the people that he gets to perform for and the people who listen to his music and that really being a driving force for him. Like it's, it's so incredible to see like the arc that he's gone through and like is continuing to go through as he finds his voice as a solo artist. Yeah. But I mean, even through our conversation, you'll hear like, he's just like in a really great place right now where it seems like he feels really comfortable with himself. And like, he he's like happy to be out here still putting out music with his fans and sharing those experiences and continuing to like, give music to his fans who have like given so much to him yeah no definitely and i mean like he put out an ep this past summer and he has a new single coming out on november 15th and so there's like all of this music and stuff for him to be looking forward to and us to be looking forward to as music listeners and it's just like he just finished up a tour as well and so it's like touring for the first time as a solo artist and like what that experience is like and like just you know prepare like being prepared for that because of like all that he went through from being in a boy band and like doing that with other people and having going from having a support system to just like having to support himself and like picking the people that he's going to work with and figuring out all these things on his own like he's really allowing himself to like be him like and just him which i think is really beautiful as well so with all that let's go get candid with jonah hi jonah welcome to the show Hello, I'm so happy to be here. We are very excited to be talking to you today because you have a lot of really cool stuff going on. So kicking things off, you've been in the entertainment industry for like a decade now. This is honestly super impressive. You know, you got your start on YouTube. You were in Why Don't We for six years of your life, which is a very formative time period. Fast forward to now, it's 2024. You released your debut solo EP this summer. You have more music on the way. But for you, what was this process like finding your identity as a solo artist outside of Why Don't We? Oh my gosh. Definitely scary at first. Like, I feel like as the band was sort of ending a couple years ago, it was just a vulnerable time of like, I don't know what's next. This is everything that I know that's been successful in my life. Yeah. And, um, you know, I definitely had this like faith that like, all right, I didn't come this far just to come this far. Like there's definitely a next step here, but I didn't know what it was. So I think it was just like really trusting the process and trusting Mm -hmm. in myself and, you know, trying to step forward. And I I reached out to some people that I really liked working with uh, during my time in Why Don't We? And luckily, uh, my friend Jason kind of would give me advice from time to time. His name's Jason Koenig. He did a couple of our music videos, uh, Trust Fun Baby and I Don't Belong in This Club. And uh, him and I just hit it off because we both like baseball and whatnot. And he would give me advice. And I called him. I was like, I don't know what to do. Like, what, what do you recommend? And he is really, really good friends with Ryan Lewis, who did all like the Macklemore stuff back Mm -hmm. in the day. So I grew up listening to Macklemore and Ryan Lewis, and uh, I instantly was like, that sounds awesome. So we got into the studio and Ryan has been incredible to work with. He like opened up his studio to me and uh, I'm actually in Washington right now at his cabin studio here. Um, And yeah, so it's kind of been like the three of us, uh, we started working 
pretty quickly on everything. And, and it was definitely some of the hardest times uh, yeah. of my life, like just feeling like I didn't know what was going to happen next. And then mm. to push through that and kind of come into this this year of 2024 and start dropping things this past summer. And then I actually just finished up my first kind of US tour. And that was insane as, you know, just to yeah. just to feel the love. I wasn't sure how it was going to go. And it was so, so good um, just to be back on stage and yeah. give hugs again and all the things. You hit so many things that we're going to come back to as we go on in the conversation, definitely. But I'm so curious also because like, Obviously, you were in a boy band for six years where you're working with a group of other people and there's so many decisions coming in from like the people that you have to work with because you're making music with them. And now that you're doing the solo stuff and you're talking about this experience of being like, OK, like who have I worked with in the past that I want to connect with? Like, who am I going to connect with now? Whatever. Like, how has this like collaborative process changed now that like you're fully in the driver's seat instead of like having to share that role with five other people or four other people? I would say like during the why don't we days when we're creating, I did write quite a bit, yeah. especially towards the end of the band. Mm -hmm. But it was always with this sort of feeling of like writing for a shared perspective. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's almost like being a part of an entity like like Disney Channel or like one yeah. of these like big, big things, you know, so it wasn't necessarily like, OK, this is how I'm feeling today and I can mm -hmm. write whatever I want to write about about my yeah. life. Like I was so I feel like that's been the biggest thing is just feeling the freedom to like, I don't know, speak, yeah. speak, yeah. speak my mind and know that it can come out however I want it to now. Do you feel like you almost had to like use a different part of your brain or push yourself a little bit to be like, no, actually, I can write things about me. I want to tell my own story. Yeah, I think so. Um, and also, I, I want to give credit to the people that I'm working with too, because they've been so great, just like yeah. giving me the space and freedom and asking the right questions yeah. and kind of pulling it out of me. Because I don't know, I think in parts of Why Don't We, I was definitely like not speaking up in my opinion and stuff. And so yeah. I've gotten I've gotten better at speaking up, that's for sure. I mean, do you think that that's also like a process of just like getting older and becoming more comfortable with yourself where you're just kind of like, okay, like I get me now and I feel more confident in like sharing my true self and my story? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's probably across the board with every human being. We all go through <laughs> growing up and figuring yeah. out um, confidence and being able to speak our minds and and everything. So I think it's, that's definitely a part of it is just, you know, I'm 26 now and yeah. um, I'm growing up and yeah, it's feeling good. It's feeling really good. Yeah. So the band's kind of announced their hiatus in the summer of 2022, and then you put out your EP this year. So that's about two years time. Do you feel like you were able to have time for yourself to kind of like process everything you went through with the band and like live life and like kind of experience things on your own a bit before coming to your music? A little bit. I think I was very much almost in like a kind of like a panic, like mm. free fall vibe of like, this is going like my life is Right. not going well right. like what is what am i gonna do i need to yeah. put i need to put something out i need to go i need to i need to link up with the right people i need like it was definitely yeah. not like a oh the band's done i'm just gonna chill out this is yeah, great yeah. like i definitely knew that i needed to be doing things so almost in a way i feel like i'm getting a little bit of that right now because mm -hmm. i got to put out music in in the summer and then actually go on tour and see like yeah. dang we just worked really hard for something and it yeah, it panned out and people came to some of the shows and this is this is really great. And so now I'm like, oh, OK, like I, it's OK. Like I can feel happy. <laughs> like I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, I don't know how to describe it, but it's been a good last few weeks for sure. Of like, Well, I guess great. it's also like when you're kind of like on this train that's going like full speed ahead of like doing a boy band for six years is really intense in like a lot of regards and like not something that a lot of people can experience, like can experience that or relate to. And so yeah. I'm sure for you, it's like the this is my identity this is what I've been doing. Like, how do I continue that by myself? Like, how do I keep this going? Yeah, I think that was a big part of the last couple years is like how much of my identity that I had wrapped up in being in the band why don't we was yeah. was a lot so kind of figuring out like who am i without yeah. that and 
um, what are the things that I that I care about and want to talk about and you know shine a light on like whether that's mental health or yeah yeah just just being vulnerable and speaking up and trying to open you know conversation not in a not in a heavy way but just a way of like let's talk about it you know yeah no definitely and it's also just like you're saying it's like there's so much pressure in a sense of like when you finish something you're like oh my god like what is next like there's like that scramble to be like okay I need to keep going because that's all I know. And like yep. in thinking about too, that too, I was thinking about like Louis Tomlinson's documentary that he put out and how he had like kind of talked about how he wanted to like take this step back and was like putting out singles that like weren't really him and like trying to figure like he took all of this time to figure yeah. out what he was doing and how he kind of felt like he owed fans like access to him again because of that like mutual connection he specifically felt like he had with his fan base. And so I'm curious because in like reading other interviews you've done, it seems like you have like a kind of similar relationship with your fans. If you felt like you were like, okay, like I can't just like take myself away from them. Like I, I want to like keep giving in that regard. Yeah. It's kind of all that I know is yeah. that like, it, it's definitely such a real connection of talking through social media and, um, I don't know, DMs, yeah. Twitter, co Instagram comments, like whatever it is. And then actually getting to see them in person is yeah. a whole yeah. different thing. But it's it's on another level than I've seen, I feel like, with other artists and stuff, mm -hmm. where it's like I have some of the most meaningful moments in my life when I'm talking to them, where it's yeah. like, I don't know, like on this tour, I, there was this – I don't want to like go too deep into people's like personal yeah. lives, but like – really special moments of like mm. a mom coming up to me and telling me that you know she's she's struggling and sick and this is the only time this whole year that she saw her her daughter is like happy and like mm. dancing around and stuff and it was just like if i can do that like i feel like yeah that's what I, that makes everything else worth it and that makes this all make sense on the same level like as much as people have like come up to me and say like oh you've helped me through a hard time and stuff like it's a two way street and they help me through hard stuff too. Like, like really yeah. it, my times of feeling like the most alone and sad and depressed and detached from the world and stuff, knowing that there's people out there that like care and tweet me nice things and say nice things and are waiting yeah. for me to go on tour yeah. and stuff like that has, has really helped. So yeah, it's a special thing. And I do feel like it's not like I can just like, stop like yeah I, I couldn't i wouldn't want yeah. to you know that's what i mean it's like the mutual like understanding between you guys where again because like you kind of all grew up together because you did start your career so young it's like mm -hmm. there is that understanding from them of like seeing your career flourish and like from you being like oh my god like these people have supported me and sometimes in ways that like friends and family don't even know how to because they don't get music in that same sense and like something we yeah. talk about a lot on the podcast like we had said to you earlier is like this idea of like teaching fans to be like ethical fangirls and like understanding how to like build better relationships like and healthier relationships with the artists that you love where it's like you can like love them so much but like kind of just like understand they're a real person and so yeah. for you also it's like being in a boy band i think that makes you kind of like larger than life in a different way i think like i don't know how to explain it but like i know what i feel when i see <laughs> boy, like when i see the boy bands that i listened to growing up yeah and so like you were saying like with having these like conversations online and like getting to spend time with them on tour like what has your experience been like in helping to like build that like healthy boundary between like yourself and these people where it is just like understanding that like you are kind of a little bit larger than life but they still also like know who you are yeah it's definitely an interesting thing where like i don't know i can see with some people when i walk up to them for the first time they have that look of like whoa this is crazy <laughs> yeah. and then like i try to just like make it the like a normal conversation like hey what's up yeah. How's it? like what what have you been up to this week or like what do you yeah. what do you like to do in your free time or whatever where it just kind of like gets into conversation um yeah and i can i try to like make it not weird um like that because yeah. i feel like if someone's just like freaking out the whole time it's such yeah. a strange conversation um, yeah. But I get it. And I, I'm also like flattered by that. That's like really sweet that they 
view me like that, but that's not how I actually am, you know, like I'm very much a normal person. But in terms of a boundary, like I'm pretty like, I stay out after every show and talk to every single person that wants to hang out and like usually takes two or three hours, but I, I love it. I love just, I love conversation, but I think there's definitely moments where like, there would be someone who like comes back for the fourth time to say yeah. one more thing. And I'm like, Hey, like I'm, I'm talking to other people right now, but I hope you, I hope you have a yeah. good night, like get home safe or whatever. So there's, there are definitely different levels of understanding within yeah. the fan base of like, I'm, I'm very supportive of everyone obviously, but like, I don't know. I, I kind of view it like obviously with a large group of people, you're going to have all sorts of different types of people. Yeah. And I want to be, kind to everyone and thoughtful but also like at a certain point you want to like draw a line and say okay I need to I need to go sleep now or whatever (laughs) no definitely I think like I think that makes sense and I think it's that thing where like in another world like these would be people that you would be at a show with like watching another artist you know so it's like having that thing where it's like oh like we have so much in common it's just crazy that like we met because of me not because of someone else so it's just like that bigger picture idea or whatever Yes, absolutely. I was definitely a concert goer growing up. Like I was, <laughs> Justin Bieber got me like obsessed with music. Like I was obsessed Love with it. him. I got my whole entire sixth grade class to go to the Never Say Never premiere. Oh, wow. Like I was like, <laughs> I was a believer. <laughs> so yeah, I I definitely feel that when you're like in another life, it could be you going. And yeah, like, yeah, it was, yeah. it was. <laughs> yeah. I mean, your career started a little bit gradual. I mean, like starting on YouTube and then going Mm -hmm. on to be in the band and obviously then having kind of a massive platform through why don't we was there ever a point where it felt like it was challenging for you to have to kind of like adjust to having so many eyes on you or did this just kind of feel like a natural part of kind of the career path you were following there were a couple different times where there was an adjustment period i would say the beginning in 2014 when i first started kind of putting myself out there on the internet and singing and whatnot that summer I was mainly actually live streaming at first, which was sort of interesting. I was on a on a website called younow.com, which I'm not sure it even exists anymore. But that was the first time I saw live streaming and I was really intrigued by it. So I started like singing and talking on there and stuff. And throughout that summer of 2014, I gained a lot of people tuning back in and following me on Instagram and whatnot. And in a lot of ways, it, that was a, an escape from my own just like, situation at home my mom had breast cancer and she's totally fine now but that was like a pretty heavy time and during that time to find a community through my laptop in my in my room was so cool because I get to like I would recognize all the names coming into my chat and it was like it was a really cool way to come into this but I would say that fall coming back to high school I was coming back into 10th grade and all of a sudden I had like 20 something thousand followers on Instagram and had been singing on the internet and before that I was just like this like kind of like baseball dude who like you know like it wasn't it wasn't a normal thing so kids definitely just treated me strange um Mm. and would like I don't know I think it messed up the like high school pecking order of popularity interesting Um, in a good way or in a bad way (laughs) like were they i was not was it like high school musical made that cool for you no it wasn't cool (laughs) like kids just didn't know what to do with it and they were like there was a lot of jokes of like oh my gosh it's jonah like it was and so are so mean look at you now yeah (laughs) But yeah, so I left. I left like two weeks into 10th grade. My parents let me. And so that's kind of how I I, I actually started touring when I was like 15, doing DigiTour and like MagCon and all these different like (laughs) internet tours and stuff, which was crazy. It was like a lifetime ago. Very (laughs) strange. For all of us. That That was a fever dream. (laughs) No, literally, that's like a pocket of like culture that like, did it exist? Maybe. Yeah. I think it did. Your brain starts leaking knowledge that you forgot that you had. And like, you're like, I didn't go. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, I'm grateful for it. Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I would say the other adjustment period was a year and a half or two years after that, where I I joined the band. I'd been reached out to by 
by someone who wanted to make the band and I knew some of the other guys that were going to be in it. And we all were kind of in similar, I don't know, we all had internet followings already. So that mm -hmm. was kind of the idea is like, we'll get people who already have a following and put them together and they'll be the Avengers of a boy band. Like <laughs> yeah, it was like a whole, yeah. you know, um, and it worked. It was, it was cool. It, it, it was a special time of like, holy mm -hmm. crap, uh, this is all coming together. And I would say that was definitely that first year of the band was like zero to a hundred really fast. You yeah. Know, mm -hmm. yeah. Moved to LA, lived with our manager in Beverly Hills, which was a mixed bag, I guess you yeah. could say. But by the end of the first year of the band, like, you know, we started making good money and touring the world. And like, it was like signed a record deal, all of this stuff. And so that's when like, okay, this is like serious. Like this is like happening. This is yeah. crazy. Yeah. And that was a really strange just adjustment as well, I would say. And yeah. then, yeah, I mean, it was always adjusting and growing yeah. and everything. Yeah. I would say that after the band ending and everything, then it's like, okay, what is going on now? And how do I adjust to yeah. this new being in my mid twenties? And I don't know, having had all these crazy experiences. It's weird. Yeah. I mean, you you went through a lot in like very formative years of life, which is like crazy. And so in going to your music, like the EP that you put out this summer, you had a song on it called Twisted Lullaby that like specifically just kind of like blew my mind that you were comfortable to like put that out. I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is like a strong, a strong man. Um, because it's like, it's like, it's hard to, like, I don't know. I feel like a lot of times, like, in songs, it's like everybody's always being, like, less specific. And, like, sometimes you need to be specific. Sometimes you need to just be like, hey, this is what I was going through. This is what happened. And so what was it like for you? And, like, in what ways were facing these feelings and, like, putting them into song, like, a necessary process for you to, like, move forward? from that time in why don't we twisted lullaby was definitely that was like the peak of the kind of struggle i would yeah. say after the band and all of those imposter syndrome thoughts yeah. of like i'm not even good at this what am i doing right. um and i was also just at a weird place in my life like in la like kind of i would say almost like holding on to the yeah. Like success of the band and like yeah. not sure where I was heading and I would de I was definitely like partying a lot and drinking mm. too much and just like I think I was pretty like hung over on the kind of like anxiety yeah. hangover vibe yeah. yeah and I came into the studio and it was just like I need it it was like therapy to get all that out yeah it's like these are all the things that I'm worried about and I'm not sleeping the last night or two like it's been so it's been just like all of these thoughts circulating around my mind of like mm -hmm. comparing myself to the other guys and yeah just thinking I'm not good enough which in putting that out it's been so cool to be that raw and vulnerable and yeah. then I had some people come up to me you know on tour and they're like wow you doing that like really inspired me to be able to have conversations and say the things that I'm yeah, thinking yeah. and also like you put words to feelings that I've felt that I couldn't put words to, which I think yeah, that's the coolest yeah. thing that music can do. Yeah. I always feel like with in creating like art, but especially like music, it, it's, it's kind of like permission to be like more honest with yourself yeah. than you normally would. But yeah. it's also like for other people, it's also can be like this honesty that they didn't know they needed to hear because a lot of us aren't like able to have those types of conversations even with our friends or like our close family members so i don't know for you like was it was it difficult for you to be honest with yourself in writing that song yes i think so it was a little tough i came in with the idea of like i'm hearing voices in my head tonight because that, that was just like the first thing that, mm -hmm. that popped in my head i was staying up the whole last night thinking about all these things and my friend Jason who I write with a lot he was like um what are all the hardest things to say like when you think of the hardest things coming up what actually are those things and let's just try to write it and see if that's a thing and it will never come out if you don't want it to come out like let's just like see yeah. and then it was like a waterfall of like 
boom, this is, yeah. It, we yeah. wrote it in like an hour. It was so quick. No, I imagine once it's like, once you start putting pen to paper and you're like, oh, actually I've been feeling this. Like I've been thinking about it. Then like, maybe I haven't been acknowledging it or maybe I haven't really been dealing with it. Like I can see how it just kind of like starts to come out after that. Yep. And so like, I mean, you start the song being like, here are all the things that I felt about like each, how each bandmate was like better than me. And I'm sure that these were feelings you were having when you were in the band and then feelings you have when you're done with it being like, where do I fit in now in the world in regards to making music? And so like in the time since you wrote the song, how have you worked on overcoming this like feeling of imposter syndrome? And like, how do you cope with that? I think just pushing through it. I mean, that was the first song that I wrote for the solo project. Yeah. And so to to write that and have it be therapeutic and then keep going and discover mm -hmm. more and more and more and find my, I guess, my lyrical voice more yeah. and just sort of like build this new world has been great and super confidence building. And yeah. then to go out on tour, like I said, like, yeah, to, yeah. like I wasn't sure – if I was going to be able to like be on stage for an hour and like yeah. entertain and entertain yeah. and hold the crowd and all of these things. And it was like above and beyond what I ever thought it could have been. It was like mm, so yeah. good. So I am so happy to say that I'm not in that. I'm not in that like headspace comparison yeah. nearly yeah, as yeah, much. Good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think, you, I think everyone has that with their yeah. friends or whoever, where it's like you're compare. I don't know. I still compare a little bit here and there, but I mean, it's, it's hard not like... not to. Yeah. Yeah. And I, th I, but... I think sometimes it's like better to be around people and be friends with people that kind of you, you, you kind of are like, wow, I want to be more like you. <laughs> yeah, like, you, totally. you know what I mean? That like, you're kind of like constantly like, okay, like I, I'm like a little intimidated by you, but I like that. And I think that's going to make me a better person. Yeah. Um, so based on like writing this first EP and then being able to put it out and being able to tour it, do you feel like this kind of helped inform like the music that you have coming up and like the direction you want to take it? A hundred percent. Yeah. That was kind of the purpose of the, this first five song project was like, get something out there. Yeah. And a lot of it, like each song kind of sounds different. It's not like all in the same vein, even it's sort of like. I don't know, we've just been experimenting in the studio and I wanted to get the ball rolling. So it's just kind mm -hmm. of putting stuff out and then feeling the response from that. And then now it's like, okay, I'm making an album for next summer and mm -hmm. I, have, I have my next single coming out November 15th, which I'm so excited about. And that I got to actually perform on tour. That was like I, the, this next song. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I ended my set with this whole last tour and it went off. It was like the fact that people didn't even know the song. And yeah. It was like the finale of the show and like everyone's jumping, everyone's having fun. Like, mm. I was like, okay, this one I feel like is definitely the next one. So, yeah. yeah. I'm sure um, like after also, like as you go on tour, people are then like recording it and like posting it on TikTok. And so by the time you get to the end <laughs> of the tour, everyone's like, let's go. <laughs> Literally so many comments. I'm like, they're like, where is slow motion? Where is like, we need it's it. Coming, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's coming y'all. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah. So I'm excited. That's so exciting. So we've kind of touched on this like a little bit already, but throughout your time in Why Don't We and like the interviews that you've done recently, even you've always said that you really want to make a positive impact in people's lives. And it sounds like as you're performing, like that's something that's really special to you too. And especially like it, within this profession, it can be easy to get caught up in fame or like chasing a certain idea of success or chasing like a certain feeling or partying and ignoring everything. Do yeah. you feel like this concept of like wanting to make a positive impact in people's lives has been kind of a grounding force for you? Yeah, absolutely. I think that that's more important than anything else for me is mm -hmm. like just making the biggest positive impact to the most amount of people that I possibly can. And that's yeah. super rewarding. And just like, I don't know, we're living in weird times where yeah. we definitely need to mm -hmm love each other and try to connect and be vulnerable and reach out to friends. And I don't know, like that was a big thing on, on tour actually. It was like in at, towards the end of the show, it was like, I would say this little thing where I was like, if you're thinking of a friend that you haven't reached out to in a while, like maybe text them tonight and just check in on them because you have no idea like how well that could go or how badly they need that. Like, 
I don't know. I, I, I went through a hard time last year where I was just feeling alone and like depressed and, and everything. And the people who did reach out to me during that time, it was like so, so incredibly helpful. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. I think it's like a really beautiful thing when like, I, I feel like this has come up for me a couple of times as we're talking to people. It's like, music is obviously like the reason why we're all here and we love music so much. But I think when we talk to artists, it's really special when it's like, you have like a message or something bigger that you want to share with the world. And music is just the way that you do that. Yeah. 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 I'm actually, I'm writing a song um, this week with my friend, my, my friends here at the studio. And it's all about, it's called better place. It's like making the world a better place. And it's really, really good. And I'm just like, what you're saying right now is like, yep, this is, <laughs> it's bigger than music. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, obviously, yeah, yeah. music can be the vehicle for connection and yeah, encouraging. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know. It's definitely bigger than me. That's for sure. But it's just like the way that music can bring people together and connect people. And I think like, when you're like gifted a platform and you have access to people, like, it's so amazing to utilize that in a good way, especially when there is so much stigma around just like mental health, especially for men, like being comfortable and confident, like talking about it and being open about it. And like something that I always like think back on is like Sam Fender. I don't know if he's a, like a British, like rock musician, but he talks a lot about mental health and his music. And like, he's like made mental health, like more accessible. And he has like a song about like the suicide, like male suicide issue that happens in England. And like, he's had so many like male fans. Like there was like a main story that he like went around talking about, about like a fan, like hearing him talk about mental health on the radio. And then this fan reaching out and being like, that changed my whole entire life. Like I wow. was like going to go do something stupid. And because you like used your platform for good, like it changed me. And so it's these things where it's like seeing young artists like yourself go through what the music industry puts people through and then use that as like a way of change where you're just like okay like i'm going to like use my voice in this positive way is like so impactful and moving and like i just like something we really need i think right now so it's like really cool reading interviews that you've done and like speaking to you and like hearing you be like yeah like i'm gonna use everything i've been through and everything i care about to just like spread positivity mm -hmm. absolutely so important i think just to talk about the things that we've all been through because we're not different you know like yeah. I feel like everyone everyone's been through weird stuff in their own ways and when you start to I feel like when you feel the most alone and when you're like detached from everything is when you're just not talking about it or reaching mm -hmm. out to anybody or saying what's what you're yeah. thinking about and I definitely have like some core friends that I just feel like I can say anything to and I would encourage yeah. would encourage anyone out there just to reach out to people it really can change a lot yeah also when you're when you're in that place is one of the times when it's hardest to reach out and be honest with people and i think for a lot of fans and for a lot of music lovers they turn to music as like that way of like dealing with their own like getting through things and dealing with their own problems yeah yeah it's a beautiful thing and i mean like also you came up in fame like in a group setting which is like most people don't experience like boy bandhood in that <laughs> regard and it's like a very specific experience where like every member is like technically as important as each other and like you don't have a situation where like oh like a bassist can slink into the shadows and like only super fans know who that is and like whatever <laughs> you know what i mean yeah yeah and, and so like to ha very few people have like this experience of the industry and like that bond and support that members of a boy band have is like so unique and so do you feel like you've been more prepared for like solo fame and like a solo career and having to like deal with this like quote unquote like on your own where like you are the face of what you're doing like having had that built-in support system like with your fellow bandmates yeah definitely i'm super grateful that my introduction to fame in a sense was with those four guys because we yeah. all like you said we we're on the exact same level in yeah. terms of we're all getting paid the same amount we're yeah. <laughs> all on the same stages we're all in the exact same meetings I, I, like everything was the exact same so yeah. that yeah. in a sense was like so nice to be able to sit in the back of the bus and have conversations about life and we all can yeah. relate because we're both go we're all going through the same stuff yeah yeah um and i also think that that all 
really equipped me well for this next chapter. It's almost like mm -hmm. that was like taking a crash course in in the entertainment industry and um, what what attention can do to your brain and your mind and everything and yeah. like to go through all that and then to come out the other side and still be somewhat okay, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then now, you know, obviously I'm dropping music again and starting to tour and everything like that. And there's definitely momentum picking up and I can see like, okay, I can, I know, I know if this progresses, how to deal with, like, I, I have the tools more than I did when yeah. I was younger. That's and how sure. to take care of yourself on tour and mm -hmm. how to keep your mental health in check, all that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Do you feel like throughout the course of... I feel like I already know your answer, <laughs> but do you feel like throughout the course of your career, I mean, especially being like put in a band together and being put on such a platform that you are, especially when you're at that age, was there ever an aspect of like having a persona? And like, do you feel like you have an artist persona at this point? <sighs> That's a great question. Um, I think somewhat, I, I, I don't know. It's such a weird thing when, you're growing up and learning about the world yeah, in such yeah. a strange setting. But there were moments for sure where it was like, okay, I'm going on stage and I want to play up this part of me, yeah. mm. you know, for the stage. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think, I, I feel like I'm mostly the same person all the way yeah. around, but yeah. it is a little nice to like have like, okay, I'm going into stage mode, like a little like yeah, alter yeah, ego yeah. vibe yeah, of like, yeah. like extra confidence, extra swagger a little bit or something, yeah. I guess. But um, do you ever turn that yeah, on in your personal strange. life? <laughs> You're like, I just need a little bit of confidence right now. Like, yeah, I'm going into, into like, <laughs> yeah, I'm going on like some date with a girl. Yeah, like, yeah. Okay, here we go. <laughs> stage Jonah. <laughs> I mean, it's funny, uh, but it is like a good skill set to have if you need it. I guess, yeah. True. I mean, now that you said that, Jonah, I feel like every introvert secret, like that's that people yeah. assume is an extrovert, yeah. actually has like, a stage persona. I'm, sometimes I'll literally be like, I'm cosplaying as a social girly tonight. Like, I'm going yes. out around the place. Let's like, go. who am I going to meet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming to my bar. <laughs> literally, <Yeah>. literally. <laughs> That's funny. Um, but no, I definitely, but like, I definitely see that. And like, I kind of assumed just because you seem like a really humble person, and like you're very like down to earth. So I feel like for someone, like it's, it, it, I think for some people, it makes sense to have these like artist personas. But for some people, you're just so like naturally yourself that it's not, not even having to fake it, but it's just like, easy for you to kind of be who you are both in your personal life and with what you show to like your fans yeah i think i'm i think i'm pretty much the same i don't know <laughs> i might not be the one to ask this question too but i try we don't, we i to try mom we need to be yeah like, excuse exactly me. <laughs> Um, well, no, because I think also, like, when we've talked to other artists about, like, this idea of persona, too, it's, like, the thing of kind of needing to be able to separate, like, your real life from, like, whoever you're presenting towards the public because it's, like, a safety mechanism. Like, I, like mm -hmm. Harry Styles has talked about it a lot and just, like, how he kind of has, like, shifted his image in regards to who he's perceived as and, like, who his friends know him as. So I think there's mm -hmm. also like the safety component. But again, like you were saying, it's like all these people similarly like watched you grow up and you're like, it's just easier to like stay who you are. Yeah. Like, what's, what's the point? Well, that's the thing. I'm the the place that I'm in right now yeah. is such a beautiful like place of like occasionally someone will walk up and say yeah. something to me or say hi or whatever. But it's not yeah. like I can imagine with with Harry, he's like. I need these things for me. I can't yeah. like, you know, like that makes so much sense. So yeah. I'm not, I, I can imagine it escalating into another whole situation with different, yeah. different issues. And I mean, like, I remember during the band, at, like at peaks of the band, like, you know, we all had girlfriends and it was yeah. very much a thing with management where they were like to the yeah. public, we don't want you to have girlfriends. Hmm. So yeah. We'd be like sneaking around hotel, room, like oh you know, like sneaking out the back door. Like it was like we were in a movie, which was kind of fun, but 
at the same time, it was just weird to like yeah. have to hide a part of your life, I guess. Yeah. No. Yeah. That makes sense. It's like how it's like how sexy is that? Like, is that really? <laughs> <laughs> is this tell yeah. all? <laughs> we here. <laughs> Look at this exactly. I, just, I just i just mean like i don't know i feel like when you like read fanfic it's like oh like secret girlfriend and then it's like yeah. living that real life it's like how sexy is that really not really no i don't think it was it i don't think it was as fun as it seems <laughs> but yeah yeah there was definitely i remember this moment i think we were in germany on tour and um I, my girlfriend was out with us at the time. I, By the way, ex-girlfriend. She's not my girlfriend <laughs> anymore. But like, she was like in the back of the venue and no one knew she was there. And we would like lock eyes and I would sing certain <laughs> lyrics to her. <laughs> so maybe a little sexy. <laughs> so a little bit. Like I feel like some of it, some of it was kind of fun. But yeah. Mm, that's so funny. Oh but God. yeah, I'm definitely happy to uh, be in my solo era after the band and not have to worry if i have a girlfriend about yeah. you know like I whatever like era double. <laughs> yes exactly like in all seriousness like thinking about like the rules you had to follow like when you were in a boy band and like all those things where they're just kind of like well this is how it was done before which like who knows if it actually was you know what i mean like mm -hmm. it's like when you are preparing to like go on your solo tour that you just finished up like was there that mindset of like okay here are all the rules and then remembering like oh i actually don't have these rules and now i can like make them myself and like do this in a way that like feels more real to me than like real to some dude that controlled my life for six years yeah i think that there was a lot of freedom that came with with this and feeling like okay i don't have to do it like we did it yeah um and i think more specifically like i don't know like prepping for tour mm -hmm. was very different and just yeah. like much more healthy and mm -hmm. like i remember like during the band like i sometimes just wouldn't eat for a long yeah. time like leading up to tour and i definitely struggled with like eating disorder stuff throughout the yeah. time and it was just like so i feel like just in so much better of a healthy space now with with all that and it's so nice yeah. to kind of let that go and be like nope that's you know i'm taking care of myself a lot more now yeah. so that's good no that's yeah. wonderful I'm yeah. like so happy for you because it feels like you definitely have like come out out the other side and be like, okay, like I'm healthy and I'm good and I can do this, which mm -hmm. like is must feel like such an amazing feeling to have like just be like, okay, like I'm ready to like be me. Totally. And also I'm like almost nine months fully sober too, oh, which has been a big, that's been a big uh, journey for me in a yeah. good way and I'm feeling feeling good about it and it's also like looking back at the the last nine months from like a kind of bird's eye view I would say like yeah. sure you don't have the occasional like crazy wild night but yeah if I'm thinking like just overall there's been so much more just like steadiness and yeah. like yeah. ability to make decisions that aren't super affected by like emotions and i i yeah. feel like when you when you're you know for me i was i was just drinking too much so I would just yeah. deal with like crazy anxiety and all this stuff and it would yeah. really affect yeah. how i thought about the world and yeah. how i yeah. made decisions about everything so i'm i'm yeah. feeling healthy in all the ways which i'm grateful really for awesome. yes. yeah yeah it's really great to hear we're happy for you so we really appreciate you sharing all of that with us we're very happy for where you are in your journey and as our last question we like to ask everyone the same thing which is that the ethos of name three songs is to empower fangirls we think it's important to be critical consumers but also celebrate what we love unapologetically so jonah what are you a fangirl of i think i gotta go with uh breaking free by uh like the high school musical song amazing, I'm amazing. Fan girl of that. <laughs> can you expand um, on that a little bit though please <laughs> like, like, why? like like are you singing it all the time like i are love you that song about troy and gabriella and how they were meant to be or like were it like what, what is the extent what is the extent <laughs> i think 
Gabriella was one of the first girls that made me feel anything. Um, and, um, you know, singing that song just brings back all of the, the feelings from that first time watching that movie. I love it. Um, Incredible. And Beautiful. It, I love it. I think it's a really well-written song. Um, so valid. <laughs> and then, okay, another one. Uh, let's do... I just saw the Eagles at the Sphere in Vegas, and it was so good. It was an insane show. I, I'm going to go with Peaceful, Easy Feeling by the Eagles. I love that <laughs> nice. song, you, which is like so opposite from a high school musical song, yeah. but it's great. Were you Where were you sat at the Sphere? I was sat on the first level up like a little under the first balcony. Yeah. I feel like that's that's fine because I think if I was really high up at the sphere, I would be ill. <laughs> like no, the no, vertigo you know, would yeah, be Yeah, so you want to be down a little more <laughs> yeah. down low. But it felt crazy. It felt like we were flying at Did it feel like you were points. on a roller coaster? Like one of a those little. like you know one of those simulate like the roller coaster simulators where it used to just like you be sitting in a seat but you're like in front of a screen. I don't know if you ever went went to one of those. Yes. I've been okay. yes. Like that's yes. what I imagine the sphere feels like. It's kind of like that. It's kind of like that, but it's great. It's so good. You got to go. Um, <laughs> All right. But yeah, bucket list. The, the seats actually move a little bit too, which is crazy. Like on purpose or like that? <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. It's like a fully immersive like it's thing. It's 4, 4XD or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Current obsession, I guess, in general then yeah. would be um, Skittles gummies. They are wow. so good. Oh. I love them. And it's actually a problem. Like I need to stop <laughs> because they, they bring me happiness. So I have to like That's have what's them once in a while. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So breaking free, peaceful, easy feeling and Skittles gummies. There we go. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for this conversation today, Jonah. It's been such a pleasure. Yeah. It's been so great talking with y'all. Really great questions. I'm so impressed with him. And like, I know that he doesn't need me to be impressed with him too, which I think is also really nice. Is just like, but I'm going to say it anyway, because it is like so impressive, I think, to come out of being in a boy band where it was like a tumultuous situation where like so much of their lives were controlled and like so much negatively affected him where he is like sharing now that he's like nine months sober and like sharing his journey with us in regards to all of these things that he's been through. Like they went through so much and for him to come out the other side, being so humble and like wanting to continue to like make music and connect with fans and like be accessible to people, I think is so impressive and incredible. I agree because it's like through the course of this conversation, we get like more and more into like, exactly like where his headspace is now and so i think it's i mean i i said this in the interview but i think it's just really beautiful that he always comes back to this like wanting to make the world a better place through the music and i think that's just really kind of like this grounding force and a beautiful reason to like be continuing to do this and to want to give back to people and it's just like so wonderful to see like his journey until this point yeah definitely i mean i just like i don't personally know if i would be able to like come back from a situation like he was in and just be like okay no like i need to keep going i need to keep making music because like you said it's like it's all he knew he's ever known yeah and like in some senses like that can be so scary but i feel like he took that and made it into a positive and is like going to continue to make it into a positive which i think is like very impressive as i said <laughs> absolutely uh so thanks for getting candy with us and jonah murray this has been Sarah and Jenna from Name Three Songs. And to get your pop culture fix, you can listen to episodes of Name Three Songs podcast on your favorite podcast platform. 